So today, I've been and had a bit of a play in all of the unreleased sports cars that we've got to be drip-fed by Rockstar at some point, and I'm going to share with you my first impressions in terms of their performance. Please note, as always, this isn't official lap time testing, this is just my opinions on their performance based on five laps of my test track in each car. Uh, we're going to start with the Comet SR. So the Comet SR is a really beautiful vehicle, to be honest, perhaps what the original Comet should have been. Let's get this out of the way immediately, this car is absolutely stunning, not just in the way it looks but also in how it drives. It feels almost perfectly balanced for my driving style and it's quick and nimble enough through the corners, it's got decent acceleration and grip as well. For those who have been in the Project Homecoming's uh, 5M server, the custom Comet they have over there almost feels like this. Perhaps that's where Rockstar got their idea from, I don't know. In terms of the overall pace of this vehicle, I feel like it's going to be somewhere near the top of the sports class to be honest, but probably not on pariah pace, which has unfortunately broken the sports class. The one thing this car does have, however, is it does seem to handle the bumps a lot better than the pariah, which is probably that vehicle's only weakness. The Neon. A nice little car, but perhaps a little bit of a disappointment after driving the Comet. So the Neon is a bit, little bit of an odd vehicle to be honest, as it's actually fully electric. As such, it does share the characteristics we find in most of the electric cars in the game, those being really high acceleration and poor traction and grip through corners. The acceleration isn't on the same level as the Cyclone, but it is still pretty brutal to be honest. Um, once you get used to the handling of it, it isn't actually too bad. It took me a few laps to adapt to it. You kind of have to be very gentle with this car through the corners to get the handling out of it. You can't just throw it around like you can with some of the other vehicles. Um, all in all, I think, feel like it's probably not going to be quite on top sports car pace, it's probably going to be midfield, um, but that's just my general view, I'm sure people with proper lap times will, uh, will give you a full impression when it comes out, but yeah, not too bad. And finally we've got the Revolter, perhaps it should have been called the Revolting, although it's not too bad in black. So this car, as we all know, is in the wrong class, it's clearly not a sports car and I've now discovered it does actually have machine guns as an option on it so we might not even be able to use it in races. Although the Comet Safari which came with this DLC also has um, machine guns and that can still be used in races so I guess we'll see. I was quite surprised by this vehicle to be honest, it's not quick, I don't think anyone expects it to be, however it drives a lot better than I expected it. It hasn't got spoiler options, it's got no suspension options either, uh, and which obviously are two key things around the handling of vehicles. And being quite big, I did expect it to be handling a bit like a boat, but it isn't actually too bad. It just lacks overall pace. For a nice luxury vehicle to put in your garage, I suppose it's not too bad, but I wouldn't buy it for racing to be honest. And that was the, the last of the unreleased sports cars. So all I've got left now is the off-roads class, as the Autarche has already been released. Um, I'll be honest, I probably won't do a video like this for the Camacho unless people really do want it. So let me know in the comments below if you really do want to see that or not, otherwise I'll move on to something else. Thank you very much for watching everyone, Coindog out.